My name is Linda Williams. I've been married to James for seven years. We have one elementary school age daughter. I never thought it was possible for someone to be so cute that it wouldn't hurt to have them in your eyes. But now that I'm a mother, I realize it's true. However, as soon as it was revealed that our first child was a girl, Susan, my mill, immediately demanded we have another one. Apparently, girls aren't acceptable. That being said, James' is family is from a long line of office workers, and there's nothing to inherit, so it's not necessary to emphasize it to that extent. Why don't you have a second child? That's what I'm told every time we visit the in-laws. I'm leaving it up to nature. If you leave it up to nature, it won't work. You absolutely have to have a boy. Dad. Even though I'm told that, James became incooperative with making another child once we had one. Even when I told him what she was saying, all he said was, just ignore her, she'll give up eventually. After about two years of marriage, the topic of living with Susan came up, and although I felt uneasy, I accepted it. Even though she won't show any love to her grand otter, and as expected, I was blamed every day for something regarding the child. You still couldn't do it this month. You're really an useless wife. Why can't you have children? Don't you have any intention of having children? I can't possibly say that James isn't doing his part. It was around this time that I started to get fed up with being the only one attacked every day. And then Susan said something unbelievable. James is going to remarry with Jenny. Uh, remarrying with Jenny? Who's that? Haven't you heard it from James? No. She's James's mistress. What? James was busy playing games on his phone and didn't seem to be paying any attention to our conversation. I looked at Susan again. Is she senile? As I was pondering, Susan shouted. That's why you should leave right away. Um, Susan, James hasn't said anything about that, though. So even if you tell me to leave. Annoyed, Susan called James over and forced him to join the conversation. Even if I make him participate, there's no way he has a mistress. I thought... However, oh, about Jenny, yeah, I'm going to remarry with her and divorce you. It's like saying, let's stop buying radishes and buy potatoes instead. What do you mean? What do I mean? What do I mean? Hurry up and move out. My new deal is coming. You explain yourself. But haven't you heard what mom said? My new wife is coming. So you're saying you cheated? It's not cheating. Yeah, he's serious. Serious? When did you even meet someone like that? Isn't that betrayal? That can't be helped, since you won't have a child. So because I won't have a child, he cheated. And have you known about it, Susan? Yeah, I did. That's why I've been telling you forever to have a boy, but you keep saying to leave it up to nature, and this is what happens. Here are the divorce papers. Sign them and submit them. James had them prepared in advance, apparently, and he took out the divorce papers from the drawer, placed them on the table, and went back to looking at his phone. How can you be playing games on your phone at a time like this? It's not that big of a deal. It's just signing divorce papers. Why is it so hard for you to understand? Susan keeps saying it's all about having children, but you don't even try to make one. Even if you say we need a boy, with your lack of cooperation in making one, we'll never have a child. Though, are you blaming James? Isn't it your fault? Why am I at fault? 
It's always the wife's fault if the husband isn't in the mood. That's how it goes. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? That's why I was against this marriage. Besides, you're too old. When you said you wanted to get married, you were 28. I was worried that you were too old to have children. And as expected. But we did have a child. We have a daughter. But that's not enough, is it? Girls eventually marry off. They are useless. People don't have children just to be useful. Well, aren't you cheeky? You know, as you get older, being cheeky just isn't cute anymore. That's terrible. I've always listened to what James said. I came here without opposing to keep the peace in the family. You know, that's what's boring about you. Uh, boring? Well, you know, no matter how much I hate it, I just have to say yes dear and listen obediently that kind of thing is just boring you know when it comes to that my girlfriend she's got her own opinions you know i think that's what's good about her what's going on accepting living with susan not opposing anything she says all for the sake of james is that boring to him and, the way things are going, we won't be able to have a boy, right? I don't have any expectations for you anymore. I mean, you're 35 already. No matter how hard you try, it's impossible. Besides, even James would prefer a younger woman, right? Susan said that as if she were mocking me. And I remembered. I've been enduring being looked down upon like this by Susan ever since I got married. Being told I'm a bad daughter-in-law compared to the neighbor's daughters-in-law, being criticized for my cooking being awkward. When my kid made noise, I got scolded for not being able to discipline her despite my age. Even when I asked James for help, he never sided with me. What was the point of enduring all this for seven years? And to top it off, James's affair. When did the affair start? And who is this Jenny person? Since when? Let's see. It's been about a year since we got married. Wait. Six years ago? That's around the time I gave birth. Yay. Well, you know, as mom said, Younger women's skin is better, so. How much worse can it get? Where did you meet her? Oh, it was through mom's introduction. Huh, Susan's. Yeah, she used to work part-time at a store I frequented, and I thought she'd be just right for James, so I approached her. Does that person know you're married? Oh, yeah, she knows. But she's saying she's fine with it if I get divorced. She was having an affair knowing you were married. How old is she? You're so interested, but you're the loser here. So why does it matter? See, my husband was taken away. Don't I have the right to know? Fine. She's 30. You're 10 years older than her, aren't you? That's why she'll probably give birth to healthy babies. So, did Susan encourage the affair with that person just to have babies? Well, after giving birth, they can just live together as parent and child. I'm not thinking it's just about having babies. As proof, I'm telling you to leave because you can't give birth. That's just... The younger one wants to get married too. All you have to do is leave. Come on, hurry up and write it. I was urged to write the divorce papers. I couldn't think anymore as they kept telling me to hurry up. At that moment, I saw my daughter with an anxious expression in the corner of my eye. Standing at the entrance of the room, she was quietly watching us. My daughter's watching. Oh. It's not good to talk about this in front of a kid. Let's talk about it another day. 
Po, it's fine. It saves you the trouble of explaining to her. Besides, if you divorce, she has to understand her parents' divorce sooner or later. That's... it'll hurt her, won't it? It's okay. This kind of thing happens in every household. Parents' divorce is normal nowadays. I inadvertently stared at James's face. What are you saying? You don't care about our kid? Thinking that, I began to feel foolish for clinging to being with such people. Then, another part of me appeared, saying, Just write it and break up already. And I picked up a pen and signed the divorce papers. Here, I've signed it. Is this okay? Saying that and throwing the pen aside, Susan took the divorce papers and looked at them closely. Yeah, this is fine. Now, please leave. What? You're divorced, so it's weird to stay in the same house, right? Even a new wife wouldn't like that, so please leave. That's... it's too soon to say that. Well, we want you to leave as soon as possible. But I have a kid. It's not that easy. Oh, my. I thought signing meant you were prepared for something like that, yet, you seemed completely unprepared. Well then, you have a week to get out. Mom, you're okay with that, right? Well, I guess day's no helping it. As soon as I signed, it felt like I was erasing the past seven years with an eraser. I felt a chill as I led my daughter by the hand into the bedroom. So then, James, humming a tune, stormed out of the house as if he was off to see another woman. Susan, apparently deciding to follow suit, left immediately afterward, and I heard the sound of the front door closing. In an instant, the once lively house fell silent, with only the hum of the refrigerator motor, which seemed oddly cold. My daughter clung to me, crying. It's okay. There's nothing to worry about. We're not going to end things like this. Yes, we'll start everything anew from here. As I reassured myself, I picked up my phone and made a call. Within a week, I had finished packing and arranged for a truck. There were piles of cardboard boxes stacked up in the foyer. Upon seeing them, James and Susan seemed delighted. So, you're finally leaving. Well, it took quite a while. And there are so many cardboard boxes. I hope you're not planning to take the appliances with you. Can't you see? Not a single appliance is missing. Well, that's annoying, but I guess it's better safe than sorry. Since there are also our daughter's things, it's understandable. It just shows how much money I've spent on them all these years. You've been so wasteful. That's true. I wasted money on people who were of no use. I won't be sending any forgotten items back, so don't even ask. I'll be fine. Well, that's good. This will make the house feel more spacious. I was feeling suffocated before. As the truck arrived and we loaded the belongings, the two of them sat on the living room sofa, Susan turning on the TV. Even when I asked James for help, he was glued to his phone playing games. What kind of people are they? Even at the very end of saying goodbye to their precious daughter or granddaughter, they maintain this cold attitude. There was a slight pang in my heart, but thanks to this, even that feeling disappeared. With everything now over and a new beginning ahead, I felt refreshed. As for my daughter, she watched me instructing the movers while clutching her stuffed animal. Her face still betrayed her anxiety, tears welling up in her eyes. It's okay, there's really nothing to worry about. With that thought in mind, I gently stroked her head, once all the luggage was loaded onto the truck, James and Susan came to the front door. 
Is it done? Yes, it's finished. Ah, uh, finally leaving, huh? Now I can invite her over. Yes, finally. Thank you for everything. Yeah, yeah, just hurry up and leave. Since this is our farewell, and considering everything that's happened, could you escort us to the truck? Huh, why should we do that? We've been a family for seven years, so I think it's only right. It's our way of saying goodbye. Goodness, you're so formal about the strangest things. Just leaving is enough for us. Yes, that's why I'm asking for your help to the truck. I have no sentimental attachment either. Mom, it's fine. That's it. Oh, really? Well, if James says so, then I guess it can't be helped. With that, Susan slipped on the sandals by the entrance and headed outside. Following suit, James put on the remaining pair of sandals and stepped out. I took my daughter's hand, and together we stepped outside the front door, giving a form nod to the movers. Then the mover said, Sir, please get in. Huh, why should I get in? It's fine, Mom, please get in too. Wait, why should I get in? You need to get in. Once you're in, you'll understand. Wait a minute, I don't want to. What should we do? The mover pushed them both onto the truck. Though they resisted, they realized that making a scene would attract neighbors. Concerned about their reputation, they reluctantly boarded the truck. James, what is this? I have no idea. But causing a scene now would just be embarrassing. Let's just get on for now and figure it out later. That's true. It'll be fine if you can come back later. I said that, then closed the truck door and let my daughter wave to them. The mover nodded, started the engine, and began driving the truck. My daughter looked puzzled as she watched the truck drive away, but I smiled at her and said, how about we have a snack? Once inside the house, I laid out some snacks I had bought to calm my daughter down. It was a smart cake, not really fitting for the occasion. Let's have some. While eating the cake, I told my daughter that her father and grandmother had moved out. She must have thought she was going to leave this house too. She was surprised by the sudden turn of events, but I reassured her that everything was going to be okay. Then, her smile returned. It seems she didn't feel sad about getting rid of her overbearing father and cold grandmother. Even at her young age, she seemed to understand who was at fault. About an hour later, just as I had expected, I received a call from James. Hey, what's going on? Oh, have you arrived already? Yo, I have. But isn't this her apartment? Yes, it is. Since she wanted to live together, I sent you over to her place. You should be grateful. Grateful, like how I am. And how the hell do you even know about this place? It's simple. You can find out with a detective. A detective? Yes, I needed the address to send you away. You're the one leaving. I never said I was leaving. From today on, you'll be living there with her. It's great. You get to live with her so soon. What? Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. I'm dead serious. Why the hell? My home is there. That's right. That is our home. What the hell are you doing messing around like this? It seemed like she was using a speakerphone, and Susan's voice was also audible, which was irritating. No, you're mistaken. This house is my home. You're kidding. It's you who's acting ridiculous, isn't it? 
Introducing a woman to my husband and encouraging adultery. It's amazing you could pull off such a stupid thing. I'm not talking about that right now. Didn't I tell you to leave when you get divorced? So it's obvious that it's you, the ex-wife, who will leave. Could it be that you haven't been told anything? What do you mean I haven't been told anything? Susan, why are you shouting here? You're disturbing the neighbors. Shut up. The movers unloaded everything from the truck and piled up boxes in front of the apartment. If we leave it like this, all your stuff will get wet from the dew. If you don't want that, then come here soon. I don't think I need to go since everything in those boxes belongs to you guys. What did you say? That can't be true. Susan continued to hysterically scream. Susan, it's embarrassing. From now on, if you're going to live there, the neighbors will think a crazy old lady has moved in. Who are you talking about? Anyway, please live there from today. We're strangers to each other now. No, we're leaving. We'll kick you out of that house. You can't do that. If you enter the house without permission, I'll sue you for trespassing. What a woman. You're the crazy one. James can confirm this. Why don't you ask him? What are you talking about? It's about whose house this is. There's no need to ask. James said he bought the house after he got married. Even though it was used, it was clean enough. That's why I moved in with him. Oh my, what a big lie. But someone who's comfortable lying even when having an affair would certainly tell such lies, right? What do you mean? Well, actually, this house was built by my parents before I got married. My parents passed away and I was living alone. But when I said I didn't want to leave my childhood home when getting married, James said, then let's live here. After getting married, when James said you would live with us, I thought it was okay since it's a spacious house. Lies. James said he bought the house used. That's why we decided to live together. Susan, think about it. How could James afford such a big house with his salary and moving in right after marriage? Even paying for the wedding was a stretch for him. But, that's... So, this house is mine. You have no right to claim it. Why don't you ask James? James, what's going on? From the phone, trembling Susan's voice could be heard. But James seemed to be playing games as usual, pretending not to hear. James, stop playing games and answer. When it's inconvenient, James tends to ignore. Seems quite inconvenient now that his lies are exposed. James, say something. Are you just going to let her make a fool out of you? Fine. As James's faint voice came through, it seemed like it was now him speaking instead of Susan. Sure, it was your parents' house, but I'm the one living here now, so it's mine. Like a child's opinion. You could live here because of our marital relationship, right? That's why I allowed you to live here. It's the same for your mother, isn't it? Well, that's true, but... Even so, you lied about buying it yourself. Even if you say that, it doesn't become yours. The ownership of this house belongs entirely to me. But if we divorce, we'll split the assets, won't we? That's true. It's never been mentioned until now. But you see, I inherited this house before marrying you. Even if I inherited it after marriage, it's still my own inheritance. Which means, it's not shared property. Too bad. So there's no need to split it. That's a lie. If you think it's a lie, why don't you investigate? I'm just stating what I heard from the lawyer. Upon hearing James's skeptical voice, Susan seemed to think she would lose if she continued, 
So she spoke up again. But what about appliances and furniture? There are things to split, right? Typically, yes. But all the appliances and furniture in our house were used by both parents. Of course, some things were bought new. Like that $30 toaster. Do you want it? Shall we give you $15? Or do you want to give me $15 and take the worn out one? I don't want it. Oh, the junk James brought when we got married is packed in boxes. And all your stuff is also in boxes. Originally, most of them were going to be thrown away. But since you do seem to cherish things, I didn't want to hear complaints about throwing them away. So, I packed everything to ease your mind. So that's how it is. Thanks to that, the moving costs were no joke. It was quite expensive. But since all the appliances are mine, it's a good thing the moving costs weren't there. So that's why the movers charged so much, that amount. It was expensive indeed. I was surprised when I saw the estimate. But since it's money I don't need to pay, I didn't mind. But there's still so much. Oh yes, absolutely. Most of them were practically garbage. Torn socks, worn out sneakers, raggedy t-shirts. You should have just thrown those stuff away. Well, when I asked if I should throw them away, what did you say? What a waste. You said that, didn't you? You shouldn't just throw things away like that. That's what you said, right? And yet, you never wore any of them and kept buying new things. So, I couldn't bring myself to throw them away. Any complaints about that? And now you're telling me to live in this cramped apartment. I can't say whether it's cramped or not. But you wanted to live with her, didn't you? Isn't that great? With all this stuff, it's impossible to live in an apartment. Well, that can't be helped, can it? You and Susan are the ones who got involved in an affair. Hey, come on. That's just cruel. The divorce went through, so I have nothing to do with it anymore. And this isn't the end. There's more to come, so be prepared. Huh? What do you mean them's more? James and Susan were surprised by my words, but I laughed and hung up the phone. Later on, I received a frantic call from James. It seems he's being scolded by his mistress. What's the meaning of this? I didn't agree to you coming over suddenly. I didn't expect things to turn out like this either. She just dumped our stuff and us here. Then take them back. It's a lot of stuff. It's not that easy. I didn't ask for this. When your ex-wife moved out, we were supposed to live in your spacious house. Sure, but it's not that simple anymore. Why not? That house is your house, isn't it? Can't you just reclaim it? Well, you see, actually, it's in my ex-wife's name. What? But you said it was in your name. Yeah, it is. But hum, there are some complications. I thought if we were divorcing, she should at least have the house, you know, to be fair. This is ridiculous. What about me? How am I supposed to live in this cramped space? And look at all these cardboard boxes we have. Yeah, I get that, but... So... Does that mean we can't live in that house? Yay, well, that's how it is. Then buy a house, if that's not possible. Then rent a spacious apartment right away, with your salary. Well, hum, that might be difficult. You're so annoying. It's no use making such a racket in this tiny apartment. Since it's come to this, we have no choice but to live here. What? What are you talking about? Are you seriously considering living here? Then, you should pay two-thirds of the rent. Huh. Why would I do that? Of course, you brought your mother along without even being married yet. 
And now you're saying you'll live here together. It's ridiculous. If we're living together, you should pay rent for each person. And also, food and utility expenses, we should split those two. Why are you so cunning? I'm cunning. You're the one trying to live here without paying anything. Most of these boxes are yours, right? I don't even know what's inside. But do you really need this much stuff? There might even be stuff in here that's unnecessary. I almost want to charge you for the storage space these boxes are taking up. They're taking up almost all the space. I can't believe you'd say something like that. Marriage hasn't even happened yet, and we're already in a battle between wife and mother-in-law. I don't even want to go back to the apartment anymore. Oh, really? Doesn't sound like fun. Don't joke. My mom says she doesn't want to live with a woman like Jenny, and Jenny says she'll never accept mom as her mill. It's so difficult that the neighbors are complaining about the noise. I thought that would happen. I've almost lost my temper living with that mill. But I endured it for James' sake. But why should you have to endure it when you're not even married yet? And on top of that, then's alimony from you. What do you mean, alimony? And child support too. We divorced because of your affair. It's only natural to ask for alimony. And since I'll be raising your child, it's only natural to ask for child support too. Days, no way I can afford that. If I pay that, I won't even be able to move out. Then don't pay. In that case, I'll have to hire a lawyer. But if I do, be prepared for it to get even more expensive. The lawyer I'll hire is quite skilled. And I think I'll also bill you for the liar's fees. Why? Because the liar's skilled. That's, please, don't make such demands. From behind James, who spoke in a tone akin to a complaint, came the shouting voices of his mistress and Susan. After that, he never paid the alimony or child support. Realizing this wouldn't work, I eventually decided to hire a lawyer. The lawyer, as reputed, demanded lump sum alimony and secured a promise to pay child support every month. But James was irresponsible. He even thought about not paying. So, I added a condition that if he didn't pay for even one month, his salary would be garnished. Of course, I also demanded compensation from his mistress and ordered her to pay it all at once. Then his mistress seemed furious, wondering why she had to pay such a thing, and another battle erupted. Jenny blamed Susan for being the one to initiate contact. But in contrast, Susan thought Jenny was the one to be blamed, knowing James was married, chose to be his mistress. Finally, the mistress, unable to tolerate being with such an old hag any longer, thrust a demand for compensation onto James and expelled both of them. The two who were kicked out seemed to have stayed at a gaming cafe for a while, but Susan kept saying that this wasn't doing the trick for their fatigue, so they somehow managed to contract a cheap apartment. However, it turned out to be a rather cool room with a cemetery next door. But then again, it's easy for you to say that since you don't live there, while Susan, who spends all day in the apartment, kept complaining about feeling queasy. He seemed to have tried to appease Susan by saying she could sleep in a bed, but apparently her hysteria was so abnormal that even when he came home tired, there was no room for relaxation. Under such circumstances, it was impossible to maintain a normal mental state, and eventually, James also suffered from a mental illness. He's now depressed and unable to work or go outside. It's tough not getting child support, but considering how he neglected me and our daughter, I hope he suffers as much as possible. On the other hand, with James and Susan gone from the house, 
my daughter and I are living peacefully together. Our lives are not threatened by anyone and are filled with peace and happiness. I'm praising the decision to divorce. 